Let's be honest, as fun as designing and decorating our islands can be, it is also often such a challenge to figure out how to get started or even which direction to move in. An easy way to clear up some of the confusion is to use our islands as a mood board. This gives us an opportunity to explore and visualize different ideas and concepts that we might be interested in, while also helping us to organize those ideas and concepts so that we have a clearer understanding of what we want to do and where we might want to consider starting. Even if you aren't sure about any ideas in particular, mood boards can still be a great way to help get your ideas flowing. Let's start by understanding what a mood board is within the context of this game. I like to think of island mood boards as a visual display of how different items, colors, and custom design codes can all sort of mesh together. Typically, mood boards tend to look more like a collage of images that can be referenced for design projects, and that's essentially what we'll be doing. Only, instead of searching through the interwebs for real-world inspiration, we're going to create a few small spaces on our island using the in-game items that encapsulate aesthetics, themes, and vibes that we enjoy or are curious about. Then we'll photograph these areas to reference later as we start to actually build up our islands. I know this might sound like a lot, but once you get going, it's a lot of fun, especially when the creative energy just starts to flow, and you see how different design elements can come together in unique ways. I like to start my island mood boards by creating two to three separate spaces that are each about 10 squares long by five squares wide. Do keep in mind that you can include the in-game buildings in your mood board spaces if your goal is to find inspiration for how to decorate around a specific building. Otherwise, there are two general ways that I suggest approaching your mood boards. If you already have a general idea or a theme in mind that you want to build around, then go ahead and collect a bunch of different items and custom design codes that you're curious about or interested in using. It's important in this step of gathering items to cast a wide net, so to say. For example, I want to focus on two themes for my island, Fairy Core and Elegant Core. I'm going to start with designing a mood board based around my interpretation of the Fairy Core theme. While gathering my items, I'm thinking about what screams Fairy Core to me, and what am I curious to see integrated with the fairy-themed items. I would recommend filling your pockets first with the bigger, bulky items that you'll put more towards the back, and then move on to the medium and the smaller items. This allows you to have a relatively structured idea of where your items are in your inventory so it will be easier to set them up in the space. After we've got our pockets all full and ready to go, let's head over to our mood board area. Be sure that if you have any specific custom codes for furniture items that you've customized the items before you start placing them on the board space. Now that we've got a bunch of items with a variety of different colors and textures, let's start by placing the paths that you would like to sample and then add a few plants in the color palette that you want to explore or just feel drawn to. Don't fill in too much space because you'll obviously still want room for the items, but do include just a little bit of nature to help get a feel for how the different colors of the flowers and trees will mesh with the items that you've selected. Next, we'll start at the back with the taller and more bulky items and then move forward to the front with the smaller items. Remember that the goal is not to make a cohesive and perfectly designed space, but instead to see how all of these different elements fit together. Feel free to switch items in and out if anything specific feels off or if you just don't like how certain things look together, and be sure to take a lot of pictures from a variety of different angles. You'll reference these photos later when you're ready to start building up your island. All right, I finished one mood board for the fairy core theme. Now I'm going to quickly run through a second mood board that focuses on the elegant core theme. I'm following the same exact steps that I used on the previous board, remembering to cast a wide net and place some items that wouldn't normally strike me as elegant core. You can replicate items across multiple boards if you'd like, but I would encourage you to use some different items just to help expand the potential for different ideas and inspiration. The next step is to make a third board that combines your favorite elements from the previous two boards that you just made. This allows us to get some ideas for how to balance both themes together so that neither ends up feeling more overpowering than the other. The end result of this method is that you'll have a lot of pictures of at least three differently set up mood boards that you'll be able to reference and draw inspiration from through the entirety of designing and building your island. 
The other way that you can approach mood boarding is when you don't have a specific theme or idea in mind, but you still want to find some inspiration or just make something. Instead of focusing on elements of different themes, you can create a few mood boards that focus on different color schemes or combinations of different textured items that you enjoy or are just curious to see how they might work together. This might lead to discovering a specific theme to design around if you notice strong patterns and elements of a theme throughout your boards, or this approach could simply highlight specific preferences that you have and you could use those preferences to develop an island that isn't focused around any theme at all, but instead is more an extension of yourself. Alright, now that we've got our photos and the ideas are flowing, let's talk about how we can draw inspiration from our mood boards and apply it to our islands. In this photo, I really liked the hanging lights framed over the gazebo, so I included this design idea here around my resident services area. And over on this other section of the island, I drew inspiration from two mood board photos. I really liked how the illuminated reindeer looked next to the giant vine, and I also liked the round topiary next to the little bunny, the duckling, and the wooden bench. These items and combinations have been woven throughout the area, and they've created just the right sort of vibe that I was hoping for. When you see something you like, use it. When you see something you don't like, burn it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you got some good mood boarding tips and ideas. Let me know how these ideas work for you, and if you have any other design questions that you'd like for me to discuss in any future videos. Remember to be kind to yourself, and until next time, bye!